Hi, this is Kathy Keener with about a 15 minute video on talent diversity in scouting and in you, the scout. So I didn't want to just make another um, diversity lecture. We all know what diversity means, uh, but what about different ways to look at diversity? Uh, for instance, diet diversity and acceptance of those who require it. Um, for instance, we're going on a, a camp out. We have to ask people, or we should ask people, what, what should be excluded? I didn't know until a couple of years ago that marshmallows contain an ingredient that not everybody can eat. Uh, however, you can go out and you can buy a, an alternative marshmallow that is just fine. Uh, but not everybody can eat pork or beef or nuts or have gluten. Maybe some people have uh, blood sugar issues, right? Um, another thing that we're going to run into through, throughout our lives is uh, leadership style diversity and acceptance of different leadership styles, right? Uh, in an operating room, you will see the hierarchical organization and autocratic style of leadership. In other words, you have one person telling everybody what to do, and that's because lives are at stake. While in scouting, we can see a more democratic organizational style between adult volunteers uh, and a more transformational leadership style between leaders, adults, and the scouts. Um, so, you know, more cooperative among the adult volunteers, uh, but more transformational towards growth when it comes to the way the um, adults and leaders provide leadership to the scouts. How does talent diversity apply to organizations? Um, well, hiring managers, project managers, put together teams with diversity and talent diversity in mind. Uh, the idea here is that people with uh, you know, different backgrounds, different experiences, and different talents are going to complement the team um, in different ways. For instance, you've got a, an expert or a specialist um, who's you know, going to be required for the project, but you also have like um, maybe a salesperson on the team. Uh, maybe you have uh, a project manager on the team that can see the, uh, the big picture uh, for, the, for the project, and that is going to make it a better uh, team and a better project. Uh, in our troop, we have families from different backgrounds that can bring different perspective as, perspectives as well. We have families that hail from Venezuela, Ireland, England, and West Africa. They have careers in engineering, medical, policing, and emergency training, hum human resources, project management, um, you know, and many different Families come from many different places and have many different uh, backgrounds, right? So what do these different backgrounds, experiences, and talents have to offer the troop? Um, and how does talent diversity apply to new scouts entering the troop? How do we make space or make room for everyone who might want to participate and really take advantage of what they bring to the table? Well, one way would be by being curious. What's your hobbies? What do you do for a living? Um, always being flexible, welcoming, and taking a step back to let others shine. Um, also available uh, for Cub Scouts, there's a family talent survey form. And um, that for Scouts BSA, there's a Troop Resource Survey form. These are found on scouting.org. Um, they're valuable, and they, you know, they talk about um, different experiences that the the family or the adults have, um, what badges they might want to to uh, teach or have experience in, um, and you know how they might want to serve the troop, um, you know, as a resource. So we've talked about, you know, showing grace to others, to other people, and making room for their different talents.
But how does talent diversity apply to ourselves? Um, how do we show grace to ourselves? Um, especially when, you know, during scouting, um, your, your age is getting closer to graduating high school uh, and possibly choosing to further your education or take some type of career path or educational path, right? Um, and so this is a personal thing as well. Uh, for instance, when you were a kid, you were asked, or when you were, you may still be asked this question, um, what do you want to be when you grow up? And and that's, you know, super cute when you're young. Um, you may say something like, well, you know, I want to be a nurse or a doctor or a fireman or a dancer or a police officer. Um and, and those are super cute. And it's, it's funny when you're young. But as you get older and you get in the high school age, then it becomes a little bit more stressful. Uh, the question becomes, well, what are you going to do? You know, you have to do something. <laughs> What's your major? You have to pick a major. Um, why do you keep changing majors? So this becomes kind of a source of anxiety, right? It's a lot of pressure, um, you know, for for school-aged kids. Um, some are born with the knowledge of what they want to be when they grow up. And, you know, that's, that's a blessing. Um, my husband, at five years old, knew that he wanted to be a Marine. And that's exactly what he did. And, you know, that's a that's a wonderful thing um some just know right (laughs) and but it's also a blessing not knowing you know exactly what you want to what you want to do you know because some can't decide on just one thing Uh, some people love to learn they're interested in practically everything um and so you know maybe they want to study various things Um, Or maybe you want to go into the military service. Um, My Coast Guard son has traveled to more than five different countries. He has guarded the president from the water. Um, He has provided security for the 2024 Super Bowl. Um, His experience in just a a little over two years has been widely diverse. (laughs) And he's gotten a lot of training and a lot of new talents, he's about to train as an EMT as well. Um, So, you know, maybe you want to do that. Maybe you want to go to trade school. Maybe you want to travel. We all want to (laughs) travel, but, you know, maybe you want to travel for a year. Or maybe you want to go to art and music, our music school, you know. Uh, You may be a multi-potentialite or a multi-talented person who can't decide right off the bat. Uh, or like I said, is interested in a bunch of different things. These these can also be called a polymath or a renaissance man or woman. So you might be in love with learning. You may focus deeply or even obsess on one subject and you get really good at it, maybe even at expert level, and then you get a little bored and you want to add it to it, or maybe you just want to switch it up a little bit and study something else. Um, And that's a wonderful thing. Uh, Throughout your life, you may find that you have 10 hobbies and five things that you're really good at and that can be utilized in your professional life. Polymaths, multi-talented, renaissance man or woman, or a multi-potentialite. Uh, Besides being very interesting people, um, are usually very capable of adapting and they're quick learners because they're always having to start over again. Uh, They're always challenging themselves. They love the challenge. Uh, They're typically good problem solvers. Uh, They're, they're, you know, full of creative ideas and they're good at creative solutions. Um, they'll probably be able to see the bigger picture better than most. Um, They may be talented with the technical side of the brain and the creative side 
of the brain, like left, right, right? Um, they may be great at being an entrepreneur, an inventor, a pipe stress engineer, an architect, or any number of, um, you know, different professional paths. Uh, one of the, the most well-known uh, polymaths uh, was Leonardo da Vinci. Uh, he was a painter, sculptor, architect, inventor, engineer, mathematician, autonomous, an autonomous rather, <laughs> study of autonomy, a musician, and a writer. Hedy Lamarr, stunning actress, scientist, inventor, World War II patriot. Her inventions and discoveries led to Wi-Fi, GPS, and Bluetooth. She was dubbed the mother of Wi-Fi. Um, also in World War II, uh, she and George Anthiel developed a system that involved the use of frequency hopping amongst radio waves in order to get past the Germans' radio wave torpedo jamming technology. Benjamin Franklin, a writer, author, scientist, statesman, inventor, printer, and editor, philanthropist, musician. He said, hide not your talents, they for use were made. What's a sundial in the shade? So, as you go through life, hear out the opinions of others. Um, give serious consideration to what talents others say you have. Uh, don't dismiss it. They may be seeing something that you're not. Uh, for instance, when I was in college, someone told me that I was really good at math. Um, and I should be a mathematician. Well, that made me laugh a little bit, and I, I completely dismissed it. And then I eventually got my degree in technical project management. Now, I not only do pipe stress engineering, I teach others how to do it using our company software. Um, and that includes teaching them the ASME piping codes and how to resolve complex issues seen in process piping. Uh, like vibration um, and issues that are found uh, offshore on a top side. Uh, I also do a lot more for the company. Uh, for instance, digital marketing, uh, designing the website, uh, managing the software, etc. Uh, so, in general, it's a, it's a long story, <laughs> but in short, it involves being willing to accept a challenge and saying yes. So uh, listen to people when they say, hey, you're really good at this because it, it could be a direction or a destination where you're supposed to land. Uh, or you could by, be like me and just kind of land there accidentally anyway. <laughs> don't allow yourself to have rigid paradigms like, I don't even like math, or I could never start a business. Open your mind and try not to build walls around yourself or the possibilities that may lay um, in front of you. So in scouting, you've likely already um, diversified some of your talents. <laughs> your journey most likely has taught you some amazing skills and brought you a lot of new potential lifetime hobbies. I, for instance, I never knew I was gonna be involved in, in archery until I was, right? Um, at the very least, you've been exposed to different skills and you've been challenged. And that's important in life, right? To challenge ourselves um, and grow, right? And so that's one of our, um, you know, biggest goals and in providing the scouting program. All right. Thank you.